Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be painting a plague burst crawler from start to finish. But first of all I want to say a huge thank you to my YouTube channel sponsors Goblin Gaming. If you would like to be within a chance of winning my painted play burst crawler, if you check the description box down below you'll find a direct link to Goblin Gaming's web store and anything you purchase from Goblin Gaming between now and the end of October will be rolled into a draw to win my Plague Burst Crawler. So good luck guys. The Plague Burst Crawler has been painted up to a very pleasing tabletop standard. I painted this tank in about two to three hours, all in one sitting. You can get very, very similar results to mine, or if not exactly the same results following this video guys. I tried to keep it as simple as I possibly could. Okay guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. As always, it's going to be long, so go grab that nice hot drink or maybe a nice ice cold beard. Beard? I meant beer. Don't grab a nice ice cold beard. Grab a nice ice cold beer. <laughs> okay guys, uh, and we'll get started. After building the Plague Burst Crawler, I decided to prime it with Alclad 2's white primer. This is a lacquer base primer guys, so make sure you're well ventilated if you're actually going to use this primer. Here I'm priming at about 20 psi, and as you can see, I'm able to pull really far back on the airbrush and paint really quickly priming with this Alclad primer. It goes down super fine and really, really smooth, and it enables me to prime really quick. The airbrush I'm using in this video will be the Awata Eclipse CS 0.35mm needle nozzle airbrush. If you'd like to find out more about this airbrush, please go on over to airbrushes.com and you'll find out more information about this airbrush. After priming all of the model, it's time to do some pre-shading. Pre-shading is going to help the base colour to really pop and add some depth to the colour. So what I do, I go around all the panel lines with a Vallejo Game Air Black and I'm just making nice and straight or as straight as I possibly can lines on the model. And as you can see, this is very simple to do and it's also a really good learning test for you to do on your tanks where you can actually start learning hand-to-eye coordination so pre-shading is a great technique to use on your models to actually get used to your airbrush
decided to base coat all of the areas that are going to be painted in metallic colours, black. It's just going to save me a bit of time later on when I paint the metallic colours as metallics actually go over much nicer over a black base coat. After the pre-shading is done it's time to base coat the miniature using Games Workshop's Death Guard Green. Now this is quite a thick paint guys and it's not meant for airbrushing but as it's acrylic base it's as easy as adding some water to it, stirring it up, making sure that the consistency is a bit like cream and away we go airbrushing the Death Guard Green. Hopefully you'll be able to see that the Death Guard Green's leaving some of that pre-shading behind and making the green look a little bit more 3D and lending itself really nicely to the pre-shading work we've just done. going to start to shade the tank using a Thonian camo shade but I'm not going to be using a brush to place the wash on I'm going to be using the airbrush the reason for this is it's much quicker and also you'll be left with a lot less staining on the miniature than using a brush so you'll save time and it will leave to a nice smooth finish you can also create a gradient as well as you can probably see that I did on the dozer blade there
And now it's time to highlight the miniature. I'm going to be using Cree Khaki by Games Workshop. And this is gonna really make those panel lines pop and all those little pop stains that are actually on the tank. I'm using a Games Workshop medium dry brush here, guys. It actually might be a large dry brush, I can't remember. But anyway, um, using this brush is really easy to create nice dry brush effects and I highly recommend the Games Workshop dry brush range, they're really good. going to start using some MIG Ammo Streaking Rust. This is an enamel product and it's different to acrylics as you can't thin it with water and you need to use white spirit or turpentine. The really cool thing about using this is once it's dried a little on the tank over several minutes you can then come back in and manipulate it with some white spirit to actually streak, pull out those streaks and stump them and make some really cool realistic rust streaks. It's very hard to do this with acrylic paints and impossible to manipulate them once they've dried. So I highly recommend picking up some Ammo of MIG enamel streaking grime and trying it out for yourself. Here you can see what the dozer blade looks like after applying the streaking rust. 
now I'm coming back in with some white spirit and I'm just getting rid of some of the rust in the areas that I don't want it. I'm also stumping areas and pulling the streaking grime into areas where I want the streaks. So it's a case of pushing and pulling the pigments around from the enamel wash and creating a really nice rusty effect. Here you can see how easy it is to pull streaks out. I've got white spirit on my brush. It's not wet, it's dampened with white spirit. I have to uh, stipulate that guys. So I make sure I remove most of the white spirit off the brush. And then from top to bottom, I'm pulling down the, with the brush on the dozer blade and we're creating those lovely realistic streaks. paint all of the silver metallics using Vallejo Game Air Chainmail Silver. And as you can see, I'm using a fairly large brush here, a Winsor & Newton Series 7 size 3 brush. And this enables me to paint really, really quickly.
All the metallics that are due to be painted bronze are painted using dark star molten metals black and bronze. I absolutely love this colour guys, it looks so realistic and I highly recommend you checking out Dark Star's Molten Metal Paints. It's time to start washing the metallics. I'm using Norn Oil Gloss by Games Workshop, but you could use the regular Norn Oil to wash the tracks. It depends on what finish you want. Uh, I'm going to be going over these anyway with a Thonian camo shade, so the finish will be fairly matte anyway. So it's up to you whether you want gloss look to your metallics or a matte look to your metallics. dried I come back in with a thonium camo shade this is to give the metallics a second layer of dinge and to really grubby them up All of the bronze colour is getting a wash of Agrax Earthshade. I'm now dry brushing polished copper from Dark Star Miniatures Molten Metal range and it's just going to make that black and bronze pop a little.
All the silver metallics are getting highlighted with Vallejo Game Air Silver and again I'm just dry brushing all of the metallics to make them pop and stand out from the tank. Now I'm going to be using Games Workshop's Technical Paint Nicolac Oxide. I'm just going to paint it around all of the spiked areas of the bronze and this is going to just add another nice little effect to the tank. I forgot to show you guys how I painted the pipes coming off the guns but all I did is paint them with Rakar Flesh and then I went over them with Druchi Violet. And here we have our finished Plague Burst Crawler guys. This was a wonderful model to build, so simple guys. I highly recommend it if you're a beginner to the hobby as it looks super detailed, yeah, it's very simple to build. Also, during the painting phase guys, this was really simple to build. I was able to get really simplistic uh, results with the weathering. I might paint uh, another one of these tanks up at a later date with more advanced uh, techniques if I get the chance. But for this uh, tank, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button if you did. Also, I really want to hear your thoughts on the Plague Burst Crawler guys and this tutorial, so please leave a comment. And don't forget to look at that description box down below for Goblin Gaming's web store. Don't forget to purchase all your items from that link because then you can be within a chance of winning my painted Plague Burst Crawler. So best of luck if you are entering the competition guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one.